Hey, what's up YouTube? Mike the Manic Geek here again. Um, so it's been a minute since I put up a video for you guys, and lately I've had this sort of itch of curiosity regarding uh, 140 millimeter fans as they pertain to uh, radiator fans, because the most commonly used radiator size is 120 millimeter by insert number of compatible fans here. Uh, but 140 millimeter radiators aren't used very often, and I was wondering if maybe it had something to do with fan selection. So what I did was uh, I started a roundup here of five different 140 millimeter fans that are optimized for uh, for radiators, and uh, put them through their paces and uh, took a look at what kind of performance delta there is to be had between these fans. Because I'm probably going to wind up using 140 millimeter radiators in my personal rig once time and money uh, becomes available. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to do a quick gloss over of all the features on these fans that make them special. Then we'll delve into things like pricing and performance and sort of tie this all together in a quick tidy bundle at the end. So first up we have the Swiftec Helix 140mm pulse width modulated fan. This fan retails for roughly $14.50, uh, making it the least expensive fan in the fans that we have for testing today. Um, but its feature set pretty much matches the cost here. We're not dealing with any uh, sort of special fan design that's wildly different from anything else out there. We're not dealing with any uh, vibration dampers in the corner of the frame. It's essentially just a very straightforward 9-blade, 140mm static pressure optimized fan that, um, you know, it's, it's no frills. It's very straightforward. Next up is Cougar's Vortex HDB 140mm fan. Uh, now this is a non-pulse width modulated fan, so you will need to rely on voltage control rather than pulse width modulation to control fan speeds here, but it still does boast niceties like a hydrodynamic bearing and a specialized high vortex airflow design uh, that also includes some diversion grooves in the fan blades that are designed to focus airflow right where it needs to go to maximize not only airflow, but to also maximize static pressure on the fan while minimizing the sound signature that this fan leaves behind. It also includes rubber uh, vibration dampers in the corner of the fan. It typically retails for around $18, but you can sometimes find it on sale for a little bit cheaper than that. Next up we have Thermaltake's Ring 14 fan. Now this is a relatively new entry from them. Uh, it does include rubber vibration damping in the corners and includes this really nice looking uh, ring of LED effect around the perimeter of the fan frame that while it doesn't do a particularly excellent job of illuminating the interior of the case, creates a really striking visual effect for the user when, uh, when the system is powered on. Now, this ring is also a part of a wind blocker frame system that Thermaltake uses in conjunction with what they're calling a concentrated compression blade, uh, where both are designed to press air in towards the center of the fan blade and the meat of the blade, where the air turbulence is actually being created to focus airflow right where it needs to go. Basically another implementation of something that most all of the fans in this testing are doing, but it's a relatively discreet implementation. Next up, we have a fan from Fantex. This is their PHF140MP fan, uh, which utilizes a couple of their own little bits of technology to help keep airflow focused and flowing for uh, high impedance uh, operation scenarios. Uh, it does include what they're referring to as a Maelstrom Vortex Booster. Uh, this is basically a shape that they implement on the fan blade that is meant to uh, control and focus airflow where it needs to go. Uh, they also include what they're referring to as an updraft floating balance bearing. Uh, this is basically a bearing that is designed to actually have the fan blade lift ever so slightly away from its hub to create maximum stability and maximum noise reduction to make sure that you have as quiet an operating experience as possible when using these fans in your system. It is a pulse width modulated controlled fan, so you should be able to have full motherboard control over this in your system. Now last but certainly not least is our Fractal Design Venturi HP14 PWM model. 
Now, you guys recently saw me do some coverage on the Venturi lineup of fans in the channel, but I didn't really focus a whole lot on the 140 millimeter fan that uh, is present in their product listing, so I figured I'd include this one in the testing as well. Now, if you guys recall from the previous video, this does include niceties like a true fluid dynamic bearing, as well as some uh, blade and stator optimizations that are designed to help reduce wind noise while, while it's operating, as well as tripwire technology that's aerospace inspired, that's designed to help reduce that additional turbulent layer of air and maximize performance on this fan. It also incorporates rubber sound damping in the corners, which can also be swapped out with additional adapters to make it fit onto 120 millimeter hole spacing for large tower heat sinks. So finally, let's discuss the performance on these fans. Uh, really, this is kind of the dull point of the video. Uh, it turns out that all of these fans really don't have anything more than maybe a two degree temperature delta between a lot of them. Um, Something to note, however, is that the Cougar fan actually had the best performance while undervolted by about a degree over the, uh, the, the average for fans, and the Fractal Design fan actually had uh, the highest top speed performance uh, by, again, about one degree Celsius. Now, none of the temperature differences that we observed here are going to really make or break uh, your water cooling system one way or another. Um, you know, a difference of two degrees Celsius, if that's, if that's the difference between you hitting a certain overclock or not hitting a certain overclock, you probably will want to stay where you are to begin with because you really shouldn't be regularly running your system that close to the edge. Uh, but all in all, I was actually fairly surprised uh, to see that all of these fans performed as well as they did. So I guess realistically, all that's left to discuss here is the conclusion. Uh, what did we actually come away with uh, from performing this test? Well, while there weren't any standouts in terms of overall performance, um, uh, even all of these fans were, were relatively quiet, uh, especially when undervolted. When undervolted, just about every single fan in this lineup was near and audible. Uh, with the Swift Tech fan being ever so slightly louder than the others, uh, though I suspect that has more to do with the fact that the fan lacks not only uh, vibration damping, but has a slightly coarser bearing than the other ones. Uh, but even still, I mean, for a price range of about $15 to $20 here, and with all of these fans being more or less uh, within spitting distance of each other, you really can't go wrong here. And that should be the ultimate takeaway here, is that as a system builder who wants to use 140 millimeter size radiators, at least as far as the lineup we have here today, you're gonna find the performance is very consistent and you should feel confident moving forward with your 140 millimeter fan purchase, regardless of the, uh, the perceived look or color coordination or, or even some of the, uh, the varying performance numbers here. All of these fans are phenomenal standouts in their own right. You could realistically, again, go with any one of the fans here and get either extremely quiet operation or extremely powerful performance and feel satisfied with your purchase one way or another. Probably the only things that I had, you know, to gripe about with any of these fans would be both the Thermaltake and the Cougar fans not coming in a pulse width modulated configuration to allow your motherboard or a pulse width modulated fan speed controller to really take full advantage of the fans. But even that being said, they're still extremely strong competitors in their own right. So guys, that wraps it up for this video. Uh, do that thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, share, subscribe, comment thing like you do. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, what did you think about this video? Do you want to see me uh, maybe do a follow-up on this? I've got actually several other fans that I had in mind for testing that I'd like to take a look at to see what it is they... Uh, what it is they have to offer that's unique in this arena and to sort of confirm my testing results here uh, to show that really most uh, static pressure optimized 140 millimeter fans are going to perform more or less the same on a radiator. Um, also, let me know uh, what other kinds of videos like this would you guys like to see? Um, you know, I'm really interested in doing some shootout videos for you guys and I would love uh, some of your input to hear what it is you guys would like to see. 
So anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap things up for right now. This has been Mike the Manic Geek, and I'll see y'all next time. Take it easy.